there's one thing that's been bugging me with this S1, and that's trying to move the uh, laser head around to locate the part. There's nothing to grab onto, so I decided to try to 3D print a part to solve my problem. And I just drew up something to start with a quick little print, and I do have TPU in the 3D printer in this K1. And I'm going to use that. I figured it's a nice soft grip and it should, you know, be good to stick to your fingers and stuff. So I find that um, it sticks pretty good to the build plate usually. And if I put it over on these ice cold stainless steel tops, but it, by the time it cools, it pops right off. And there you can see a beautiful TPU print. That K1 is just an amazing printer. I can't believe it after hearing so many people beat it up on uh, reviews. And then I just decided to use double-sided tape. I wish there was a way to screw it on, but there's not. And this is just, um, you know, just a prototype to try. So that's what it looks like. And let's go over and put it on the printer. Um, the S1, you can see I've moved it into my shop now. I'll show you in a second why. And I'm going to clean that off with 99% alcohol just so that the double-sided tape sticks. And I want this stuck to the top plate. I thought about putting a piece on the front of that front, but I'd rather have it stuck to that mounting plate on top so I don't take a chance of bending that other piece or doing anything wrong. Oops. So there it is. It doesn't cover any of the fins or anything. Airflow should be okay. Um, the only thing it does do is it adds about 20 grams to the head weight. So I'm not sure if that will affect it over time. So I'm going to do some testing and, you know, just see how it works. But I soon realized that I, uh, I thought you could just kind of grab onto this front edge and get your fingers under the back there, but you can't. Um, you can see right there, you kind of your fingers get in the way. But let's just double check the clearance all around. Make sure it moves, doesn't, you know, goes to the stops. So it looks like the idea is going to work good, and we're just going to have to uh, create a different version to uh, that, that drops it down some, so I can grab onto it like that when you're in the back and just kind of put your finger on it. That's just not quite enough of a lip, so I just dropped that lip down and I brought it out a little bit. And here's the uh, slicer that I use from Creality with the K1, and it it just this printer has just been amazing. I really love it. I made so many parts with it. It's got a couple hundred hours on it now. So let's print this one out. But one thing I found out was I it's coming out beautiful there, you can see. And then I went upstairs to take a quick nap. And when I came back down, this is what I found. It lost adhesion on the build plate. I guess I should have put a little bit of glue on there because it's so tall. But you can see it, it did come out beautiful until it lost adhesion. So let me just put some glue on the plate and run it again. That time it came out perfect again, you can see. Everything is flawless, especially with TPU. I just can't believe how good this thing works. So again, I've got to let that cool a while. It's stuck on there pretty good now. And there it is, another, another pretty much perfect print. And that's a soft, flexible TPU, so it feels nice when you grab onto it and it's a little, you know, sticky like you can grab it. So let's stick this on double-sided tape again, same spot. You can see it doesn't cover any of the air vents or anything. Um, you know, this is just an idea. You could do something different, put it on the, on the front if you want. That was one of my options, but this was just something that I did temporarily till I come up with a really good permanent fix for it, but... I just wanted to show you because it really does make my life easier now. So there it is, uh, stuck on there, and uh, that little thing there, I pop that off. I hit that all the time and knock it off. And you can see, um, pretty much, let you go right down to the back there, across everything, a little lip down there to grab onto. It's kind of up out of the way for the most part, out of your vision and stuff, and clears the cover, clears everything. So, you know, this is what I'm going to go with for now, and hopefully the double-sided tape will stick on it. And I'll do a little more, you know, testing just to make sure that I can. Uh, it doesn't affect the print quality or anything, just, you know, having those couple of extra grams on it. But I doubt very much that it does. So there it is. So 
let's try it. And I wanted to show you that there's this new feature for locating circles, polygons, and lines on this. And so what you do is you uh, just start marking your processing area and you pick three points on this circle. So you can see just how easy it makes it to grab onto. Um, you know, without that, you're always just trying to move it and there's nothing to grab on. I'm surprised Xtool didn't think of this. But I'm picking, you can see three points around the edge of the circle, and this does do a great job of locating it. Um, I know this was a big complaint that many had originally. And you can see this handle does a, really, it's it's really nice. So there it is. Um, and I want to show you one more thing here. Uh, I had the actual... Um, part over a little too far you can see even though it's on the honeycomb the honeycomb was over too far and this let it's just kind of weird how this lets you go out of bounds on it you know without any warning and it lets you mark stuff that's off the honeycomb too so i don't quite understand why it's like that and i'll show you i just want to show you another couple things that happened after the last software update too so there i moved it over marked it and uh let's get this just throw some text on this round piece just for a test. And it does locate it very accurately. You know, it does do that good. But um, now I'm going to send the file over and process it. You can see just this is the time it takes to process now. For some reason, it seemed to, to slow down a lot um, this last update. And another thing I'm finding is that it can hold in memory the last job you did on the laser the yes one you can turn it off turn it back on and that job can still be in memory and this is what happened here you can see it just said just kept saying uploading and it looked like it went 100 percent and the light was on and i pushed it and this is actually starting to run the previous job that i had run on it and uh here you can see it's you know it's all vented outside now it's hooked into my exhaust system with all the other lasers so um that filter is not safe for use with acrylic i found out so you know everything this thing definitely got to be outside and let's look at this filter after about 20 hours of use it was starting to pump the uh, smell right through it and you can see what you know that's the stuff you get in your lungs if you don't vent it or use a filter but this is uh probably less than 20 hours of total use on this filter and the smell is going through so all this stuff really has to be replaced now so i'm going to say that the um it's going to be very expensive if you buy one of these filters to use it indoor because i think this whole you know replacement canister and stuff is probably like a hundred bucks or something like that so um best thing to do if you're going to buy one of these is plan a way to vent it outside and make sure you have good airflow because the filters don't last very long at all. Anyhow, back to here. Um, so now everything's hooked up so I can do acrylic on it and um, you know not have to worry about any smell anymore. And I'm gonna I'm gonna start stop that because that was the wrong artwork running and send the file again. And this is another thing that I noticed now. It lets you resend the file. And well, here I'm stopping it, restarting, restarting the XCS soft tool, and then I'm going to go back, and I also have to shut down the laser and restart that because for some reason, when it hangs up, you can't clear the memory in it somehow. It it just gets hooked up, so I'll restart that too. And let's go back and just locate it again. And there you can see again how, you know, something like this handle really should be on it. I mean, they could punch it in the, even like a louver in that front cover or something or, you know, make it so it doesn't add any extra weight. But um, this was my solution for now, just to make it easier to use. So let's locate that. So you can see it picked up the circle, put it on there again. Um, it's worked perfect every time. But I'm going to leave the cover open now when I send it. So you can see it's sending the file to the processor. And it does it does take a long time till you find out that the cover is actually open. So you sit here and wait and wait and wait. 
and wait. And I don't know what happened. Something changed. It used to go faster. But, okay, file there, and it says, okay, close the lid. So you figure, okay, I'll close the lid, and I'll start it. But what happens is it cancels it, and you have to start all over again. So make sure that you close the lid before you try sending a file to it now. And then let's send the file back out for processing. And you have to, you know, wait again. So I just wanted to show you that, uh, you know, this is an issue that I'm starting to see now. And I just wanted to see if anybody else is having the same problem. Yeah, so, it, you know, it's still sending it. So it just took me, you know, several minutes just to get a job running. I just wanted to show you that. And, you know, just show you if you run into a problem with something stuck in memory, um, there it is. That time it came up with the ready button and you know that there's nothing stuck in memory. Um, I made the mistake of not waiting and not resetting everything the first time, but and this time everything is uh, reset, running, files going, and you can see it's doing a, a beautiful job. Uh, the little bit of weight from the handle doesn't seem to be affecting anything, but it took 32 minutes to run that. And there it is. Perfect, nice, deep engraving I got. And a little bit of sanding on the surface of that, and it'll be perfect. So, you know, you can see this machine does do a perfect job. Um, you know, really beautiful work it does. But, uh, you know, just one little thing that I, I wanted to um, show you, you know, how I handled fixing it. And I'm not sure if you, you know, if you want to come up with your own solution. If not, you can let me know, and I can always uh, put this file up on thingiverse or one of them but um i'm just not sure yet if it's going to affect the uh the machine being a couple extra grams on there but you know this is my solution and um you know let me know what you've come up with if you've had the same problem yeah so far it's been a great machine to use but um i don't know that last that last update of the software seemed to give me a little bit of issues that i showed you here so thought i'd just share them thanks for watching please subscribe